our journey now at Grand Bank getting started a much larger institution eight years ago, Regent Financial, about 24,000 associates, 32,000 endpoints with land nest. Um, and I work in field services. I managed about 50, 60 technicians that did tier three great fixed work. Um, First Bank was our second, the, the second bank I was at for about four and a half years. Uh, we started out uh, in 2018 when I started there with $4 billion in assets, 70 locations, 450 associates, and we used case imaging and service desk. Anybody remember case? Yeah, very challenging. Uh, that also did our patching. Well, it didn't do our patching, it was supposed to do our patching. We'll talk about that later. When I left um, in April of last year, uh, we did a lot of acquisitions over the years there. So that's how we grew. We were 8.8 .8 million, 125 locations, 1,150 associates, and we had kind of the full uh, Avanti suite of applications and all through those uh, as well. So a lot of growth there, a lot of challenges. Um, the nice thing about uh, the Avanti products, when I got hired there, it was, hey, we need a patching solution. That was our primary focus, and we needed a ticketing solution to replace what Case was supposed to be doing. Uh, I'm a project manager for IT. So I did. So that went to what I knew. I knew the service test package, the shadow patch engine is probably the best, if not one of the best out there. Bonky had it. And so that's where we went and decided to go with um, Initial requirements improved patch management, more robust high field based service management. Again, remember my history was more service desk and tier three technician. This is what we got. So our initial implementation. Uh, was ITSM December of 2019. Um, uh, Ivanki did our install. They outsourced our endpoint management solution uh, installation to uh, Latest Solutions, our Ivanki partner, uh, or became our Ivanki partner. Uh, really good uh, experience there. Uh, and we needed to do software deployment, and obviously desktop. Uh, we found a path. We know how to patch desktops with the solution. Server patching is a little bit different. So we want security controls. If you not use that product, really great, super, really nice for one-off patching too. If you got a desktop, you just can't get it with the agent. Good thing to do. Um, miscellaneous endpoint deployment, one-offs, so those hard to reach. And we had a Monkey Cloud. Everybody remembers 2019. If you ever saw the Monkey Cloud, wasn't quite as full featured as it is now. Neuron's Pretty nice uh, package right now. Uh, so, three years on premise with all the blocking products we had. Uh, at the end of three years, we went back to latest solutions and said, hey, we need to stuff to the cloud. There were some integrations we needed to make with other Avanti products that we were not going to get on premise installation. So, new service desk, uh, or everything, uh, except for the things like endpoint management that need to stay on premise. To be connectors between the two, um, connectors for Azure, or for AD, um, Ash, et cetera. Um, and then at the same time, we did the cloud migration. We also moved up to the ITSM Enterprise. Uh, we did it for really two reasons. One was um, demand for quality project management. We all use that in the, in the suite of products. It's really pretty nice. Um, and then facilities really focused on how do we get our line of business into the service test, right? We know we can do IT tickets. We know we can do problem change, and they're really good change management, not to always change management package as well. But how do we get our business partners to use it? And that was a struggle for us at first because we couldn't convince anybody, hey, you need to run your business out of here. Um, to the point of, uh, I talked about where we were at the end when I left First Bank. Uh, the last thing we did was... Uh, Acquisition of a $1.8 billion bank, 25 locations. Um, we managed the entire project for the bank in demand and portfolio management. Yeah, every, everything from the marketing side, from the front office to back office. Um, we actually spun up, I went to latest and said, hey, we need a test tenant. And I dropped agents to all the PCs in that bank we were requiring, and then into neurons so we could see them patch what they needed to. They, they had lost their IT department. Uh, asset management, procurement. Um, we were getting ready to do security operations management. Anybody familiar with Right Pattern? Yep. Uh, they're a fantastic call center. We
we've been using a blocking voice up until that point, uh, and we need a little bit more robust, a little bit of uh, Watson, right? Try to get things up front. And I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, automation and identity. One of the biggest gains we got was using automation to reach out to our HR system. We would take on HR uh, with the API interface. We pulled daily from HR, 3 o'clock every morning. Um, and that handled our automated onboarding. When you change positions, uh, I'm going to steal Jared's term here, it's joiners, uh, movers, and leavers, right? So as you move throughout the organization, we have the ability to get you into the right simple things, the right distribution groups, the right security groups, but we could also provision your access based on that. Uh, we, could, we could provision your access to our AS400 for our core app, to our test box for your tech training, right? Um, that was huge. Now we knew that source of truth was somebody once said it was the North Star. I'm not sure they count as a North Star, but um, it, it allowed us to really have um, good data, consistent data. Uh, we worked with HR where we redefined job positions, got rid of, you know, we've seen the job positions like VP slash something, right? But, well, that doesn't work with automation. Right? You, you don't want this custom special stuff. Um, so we did write pattern, we did automation. Um, discovery was, uh, in fact, I just spun up discovery, the first instance of discovery at the Grand Bank Friday. Um, we're just you know, the day of limitation. Discovery is great, and it's great for a couple of things. You can put an agent on all your Windows stuff, and there's Linux, right, and Max. But the unknown unknowns, what's on your network that you don't know about? Discovery, we do, we did, and I'm doing now. IP based scans, SNMP based scans. Um, you can do both credential and non credential. So yeah, you get a lot of detail back from multifunction devices, your printers, your, 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 your um, on the, on the Cisco customer, you can get stuff on our range switch, I guess, really. A lot of them, firewalls, gets a full asset uh, inventory for you. Um, I'm sure you've all heard about neurons for risk based vulnerability management. That was one of the security things we put in to help us really understand what our vulnerabilities work, which really are the ones you need to focus on. It's not always looking at the eights and nines because there's probably no patches for them and they're probably not going to exploit it. But the fours and fives, they are being exploited and there probably are patches. So you look at what the risk is to the organization. And then um, probably the biggest one you see on the left is it's now called service mapping. I don't, I don't know. Neurons, neurons from service mapping from Rima partnered with Devon. We put this in, the goal with that was for us was to enhance our asset management. I believe everything starts with asset, by the way. If you don't know the asset, security, support, it's all about the asset. So whether that be hardware or software. Uh, we needed to uh, enhance our CMDB. Uh, we had a lot of bank regulators tell us, hey, we need to see data flow diagrams, and that's what you see on the left. That's not particularly ours, but that's what they look like. Um, and then, uh, so we got, this is a great tool. It's going to ties into our service desk. I don't know if you can see very well. Um, it, it'll, if there's a change raised for that device, you'll get a little icon that shows you a change. If there's a recent ticket on it, it shows you a ticket on it. And you can click back and forth between the two. I can click on one of those devices and it'll take me over to I, I Sam and show me here's the change management thing is submitted or here's the ticket on it. But the thing we didn't expect about this was how much it impacted our business continuity plan. We knew here's the services we need to restore in kind of the order, but nobody really had a big picture of, okay, in that service, what's involved with this? Is it a SQL server? Is it just an application server? What's it community, communicating with? Uh, so it helped us when we, we got down to the last, or service maps or our lending at platform, two types of lending, commercial and consumer. You can see everything, how they integrate together. And that's kind of what you see in here. Um, and then we were able to really define, okay, from a business perspective, what do you want to restore first? What's the most important things for a bank to restore? Uh, and obviously your customer facing stuff, deposit accounts, things where they use cash or big cash, right? Um, and then commercial lending or consumer lending. We can now identify every asset that tied into that and prioritize, uh, you know, how many people have a SQL server that you probably have four or five different apps with a database or instance running on it? But what does that impact? Now you know, because you know that SQL server is talking to these three application servers and being delivered. Um, so again, we work really closely with 
folks from Latest, the folks from Brave who did the install, from Locker involved, great product, um, and really, really helped our ACP. So one of our challenges, so early adoption, the other night, that one's on me. I'm a relatively an impatient person. I see a product, uh, and I think it has a business need. So, so a couple of times I caught a on the off guard. They weren't re ready for us. Um, or again, my decision, not theirs. Banking and regulatory requirements. I talked about those data flows. That's a, that's a regulatory requirement. They want to come in. They want to make sure you know where your data is going, what it's doing, uh, internal, and as it leaves, it comes in. Uh, organizational maturity. Um, a lot of our internal business partners were not ready for uh, working their stuff, their their processes in IPSF. Uh, but when we got those first few key ones, they became advocates. So it's and then we had our business partners calling us. What can we do? We have this process. Can we put it in, in the IPSF and give them a task or give them a ticket, whatever it happens to be? So we, we started at the, at the end of the four and a half years I was there, we started to get um, a lot of business unit requests. We spent more time doing business units. So simple things, uh, anybody have a mortgage, you can buy a house. Every one of those people dealing with mortgages has an NMLS number, right? They all have, and it's regulated. So if you move into a bank and you have an NMLS number, they got to go register, say, hey, I'm with this bank. So we track you move in and out of the bank, in and out of the position that required you to have it. We notify the person in charge of NMLS on the ticket. They went out and made sure all the stuff on the, on the NMLS system on the cloud was updated and what it's supposed to be. Simple things, but big wins for the business unit because now they're not trying to manually track all that stuff. They're doing it here. HR fed it in, hey, this is a position that requires NMLS, great to take it. They change positions, great to take it. Really great. Uh, and then, uh, so we, it took us a while to get everything in um, for the businesses to understand. But well, after about year two, uh, year, th year three, we started seeing all this additional requests. Tried to work with HR, they, they uh, were slow with offers, but we started getting shown what they can do, um, creating, uh, initially when we did our onboarding, before we got to the API perspective, we just created that paper that based to joke if you can add an ability form, we'd send it 36 people in Russians just so they'd have one. When you onboarded the bank, um, got rid of it, made a self-service catalog, made HR, and when people could access it, they type in all the information, hit enter, and we and initially we create tickets and tasks for people, and then we used automation to create your ID account, create your email, add to the groups and stuff we can. And if I couldn't, uh, we created a ticket for that business unit uh, to, to add you to uh, Laser Pro, which is an application for loan doc prep, right? Couldn't automate into it. We just created a task or a ticket for that group. We had to get track. Um, one of the nice things that came out of all that with the onboarding thing is regulatory requirements for us are, you know, you have there's a reasonable amount of time and you have to disable or remove an account when somebody leaves and the regulators would get mad at us and say, well, you're not doing it quick enough. Well, here's my audit call. It's here. I mean, from the time HR told us it took us an hour and a half to disable that account. They pick a date and time, and that's what we did. It. We had a couple of instances where what HR had in their system didn't match ours. Uh, had a couple of IT-related uh, uh, recommendations. Uh, but we're able to go back and say, look, they told us at this time, they said, the HR system says something different. Right. So, Auditors uh, acquisition lifecycle requirements requires a lot of time. When you're when banks buy banks, it's 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 not you know a quick thing. You got to get regulatory, uh, and this allows us to kind of track and do things and, and keep track of things. Uh, like I said, the last banks, big banks, big purchasers, we focused on four, five, six hundred million asset dollar to dollar. Asset banks up to that point, uh, one point eight billion is pretty big. Um, so this is where we ended up, and I know that's a strange looking diagram, uh, but I love bubbles, right? So uh, Rapid Seven, uh, we migrated them because they had integrations into ISMs, so we can start getting tickets and vulnerabilities in their VMS. Um, we get 
security incidents, uh, we talked about API interfaces to uh, HR, onboarding, associate changes. Um, so this, I guess I should have probably had a on here. Uh, so if it's light blue, it's cloud. Um, if it's red, uh, it's Avanti. So if it's right, light blue and red, it's Avanti in the cloud. If it's red and gray, it's Avanti on-premise. So this is, I mean, you're here, and it's very small. You've got Rapid7 in the upper left-hand corner. Right pattern call center is the big blue uh, RB VMS. But you see everything ends up in service management. Everything runs through there. Down the bottom, we've got uh, Azure and Dell Warranty Information, 365, uh, EPM. I just got some better security controls, neurons for service mapping. Uh, we had a lot of different products tied the IT support functions and security together. Um, the last thing we worked on, probably the beginning of 23, uh, just before I left, was giving our service desk people access to neurons. When you work a ticket, you've got ITSM here, you may be remote controlled into the user's desktop, but you've got neurons up and you're looking at the overall condition of that device, if you miss the patches, they can deploy them right from there. So you get you got up front with patch manager, we had EPM doing patching, we had neurons, we had ISEC, and we had service tests. Um, our patching did, um, significantly improved. Never had any regulatory issues after that. Um, and again, we talked about augmenting the business kind of disaster recovery. Uh, Success is deployment of products on time within budget. Uh, one of the things we did um, when I started looking at ticket categories um, in, in how we designed our system, where were we spending a lot of our time working tickets? Hands down, probably like everybody else in the room, account unlocks, password resets, right? They were a significant portion of, of what we were doing. So we went down the path of using a bunch of voice initially uh, identity director, which I don't think is available anymore, um, uh, to do um, password resets of the locks using MFA, right? Text your code, read your code, and reset your password. You're a new employee, you get an email in the morning, here's your you're starting, here's your login information, um, your user ID, you come in, log in, hit reset password, and you create your password, you're on your system, because your managers ordered your desktop about that before you well before that, right? Not just showing up today, you do. Um, and, and they're in and working in 10 or 15 minutes, easy. Um, so we, I, kept, I don't remember the exact numbers of the counts. I don't think I have them in the notes anywhere. Uh, but I, I do know the first year with uh, Identity Director and Bonky Voice and then eventually Bright Pattern, um, the first year of cost save for us was $160,000. Gardner says it's $70 every time you call a service desk agent to talk about unlocks and recess. $70 cost. We saved $160,000 the first year, uh, and I think it was say 176 the second year. Um, big gains, and the users got back more quicker. They didn't have to uh, wait and queue if your service desk is busy, things like that. Uh, increased service capabilities, we could do a lot of stuff that we couldn't do with the old system. Uh, most robust self-service offering. Remember, I don't know how many people have been with Alon here, familiar with Alon. Remember Shift Left? Well, there may be a while yeah, to understand what Shift Left was and the DOM. I mean, make your users their own tier one support. Give them the service desk offerings based on their job or their position or their location. Let them do the support themselves. If that doesn't work, then they go use service desk. Uh, business unit acceptance partition, participation. Talked about that a little bit. It was, um, like I said, a little bit of a struggle. But then we couldn't keep up with the requests. We'll put your ticket in. We'll get to it when we get to it. Right? Um, until change management implementation. We did change management like we did onboarding. It was a paper form, and you had to get three or four signatures on the Adobe form you sent around before you could do your change. And it was always last minute change. You know, hey, I do this now. Uh, we put it, put it, use the change management module, ITIL based, CAD, ECAD, put some timing on when you had to do it. Hey, I got to know it's three days before you want to do your change. You want to do it. Uh, no, no more last minute changes. We had a significant amount of self induced outages because of our change process. This reduced the self induced. Um, 
Again, I talked about portfolio project management, use for mergers and acquisition projects, automation onboarding, uh, and patch management I mean, to the point where our regulators are like, this is really good. We don't see banks that have this. We had a, does a CSA client still exist? Yeah. So CSA, the new cloud based, right? We had EPM, security controls, neurons, um, and service desks. So we had layers of patents. We were going to make sure that we got everything patented as quickly as we could. Uh, and neurons has improved significantly. By the way, if you've not looked at what it could do for patch right now, we would need to be successful. Uh, lessons learned. Clearly define your current and desired states. Uh, know what you got and where you want to be, uh, because there's a lot there. And if you've not seen how the workflows how many people are not using the bottom guy? Is everybody here using it? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So I used to do the, the Southeast IPSA users group, and that was one of the biggest things the Cheryl folks wanted to get in and see what IPSA looked like. Um, but uh, it, it's, 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 you got to know where you want to be and be adaptable. Um, preparation obviously is essential. I'm not talking about anything they don't know right here. Define your services, your teams, your SLAs, everything that you want. Set realistic goals. Uh, be methodical, or as my wife tells me, OCD. Um, understand how the products interact and you know, test, test, test. Obviously, find a great in the bonding part. One thing I didn't put up here that is probably very important is don't get hung up on it. This is the way we've always done it. You need to be open to you changing your process and procedures. Um, we changed a number of different things. We got a lot of resistance to change. Everybody is in the organization. I think understand that, right? Nobody wants you to change so far. Uh, I'll give you the time. Nick, I'm probably way ahead. I tend to talk fast. Yeah, that's it. Um, what to look for in an Avanti partner. Like I so said, we came across our Avanti partner just by chance. Avanti kind of gave them to us. Um, wide breadth of product knowledge and experience. You got to have a deep bench. You don't. You know, you're just going to do IPSM and they have an IPSM person that's great, but they need to understand what you're going to integrate into IPSM, right? They need to, you know, automation, uh, change the modules to move procurement, things like that. Uh, they understand your vision, very important. Um, most IT stuff is relatively the same. It's just a little custom one-offs for your business, I think, to make it different. Uh, they present creative ideas and solutions. There were a number of times where I was like, okay, this is what I want to do it. And it was like, well, what, have you thought about this? Um, no. And it, hey, it turned out to be a big benefit, of course. So, uh, and then they have to have a strong relationship with the Avanti team. I, I couldn't tell you how many times that when we would have discussions and we the, the next call, we'd have the Avanti uh, product manager on the phone with us to talk, talk us through things, help us understand a little better, or listen to our input and say, hey, this is a better way to, um, to uh, go about this. I think initially, I don't know where it's at now, initially ITSM looked at MAC address for uh, device uh, categorization um, or the key to make that device unique. That, that could change. I mean, I know there will be changes to NICs and servers and PCs anymore, but um, you know, the serial numbers were all about for me. Uh, and they're a partner, not just a sales. I just didn't want a vendor to buy a product. I want someone who's going to help me improve our team. Um, I think uh, where we ended up, I started out with three people in my call center, uh, not the three when I initially started the bank. Uh, they left because I had I was making them answer phones and they didn't want to answer phones. Uh, when I when, we, when I left the bank, we still had three people in the call center, so we had that 450 users to 1150 user growth in four and a half years in. My service test people actually had time to do other things for me than take calls. Uh, saved a lot of money, a lot of projects, a lot of little tasks, whether it be cleanup in AD or something like that. Um, so that was important to us. Um, 